What's up, YouTube? We are going to Photoshop this photo on the left into this photo on the right. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, a lot of small details that you might not notice. Uh, the big thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of um, of this microphone, uh, the one I'm talking to you through right now. Um, this is just sort of how I shot the photo. There's probably better ways to do this. I should have used fishing string or something, but I just put the watch on my microphone, on my microphone stand, to get it to uh, stay upright so I could take this photo with poster board or black foam board a few feet away in the background. Uh, that way, you know, it's, we have some separation. I didn't want to shadow or anything. So it was just an easy way to shoot the photo at the time. So we're going to get rid of this, show you how to remove objects from a background, especially such a simple, solid black background like this. Um, we are going to straighten out this uh, strap. So here it's pretty straight, and here it's curved uh, to the right, so we're going to fix that. Um, that's going to be like warp or warp tool, that sort of stuff, but we're going to have to cut out the watch first with the pen tool to do that. We're going to make the background pitch black, because um, we're, you know, we just want it to look like this. Also, we are going to do touch up on the watch. We're going to get rid of some dust particles. And we're going to fix areas like this area right here, for example. We're going to brighten this up to make it more even on both sides. Uh, that's going to be dodge and burn tool mostly. Um, I also modified the end of the seconds hand here. So it's a little bit further away from our day date um, part of the dial here because I don't, you know, I want some separation between the lines of the second hand and the lines of this. It just makes it cleaner. Just like I shot this, so my minute hand was not on top of my Seiko automatic uh, text here. I moved the hour and minute hand so they were not covering anything. Um, it just makes for a cleaner photo. That's an absolute must if you're shooting photography of a watch. That was a long intro. What else are we going to do? One last thing, mainly we're going to color grade. Going to color grade and we're also going to straighten out these bars like this bar. We're going to straighten that out to make it level. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, before and after. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Let's do this thing. Um, let me know if my drawing tablet is too loud in the background. I'm using a drawing tablet instead of a mouse for a lot of this because it's a little bit quicker. So I like to switch back and forth actually a lot. Um, turn off my blue light filter. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this thing. So I think in retrospect, of course I edited this photo already like a month ago. I think in retrospect, the easiest way to accomplish all of this in a timely manner is to first use the pen tool to cut out the watch. If we can do that, then it will be easier to straighten the strap. It will be easier to get rid of the mic in the background. It will be easier to make the background black without affecting the watch colors and making it too contrasted, which is what you have to watch out for. Um, so with that in mind, let's go over a couple different methods for selecting the watch. First thing I'm just going to try is, um, oh, where is it? I want to say it's in the properties panel. Okay, so here, properties tab, I'm going to hit select subject and just see if it does a good job. Okay, so, so far we've gotten really lucky. It seems to have done a pretty dang good job around most of the watch. Uh, we still have to go in with the pen tool and, um, and you know, deselect the microphone and then select the strap down here. But for now, this is looking pretty awesome. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my adjustments panel and throw on a temporary curves adjustment 
just so I can see what I'm working on better. Um, oops, I should have done that uh, separate from select subject. We'll do that in a sec. Okay, right now we're going to work on this selection. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and... Smooth it maybe. No. Feather it just a little bit. Bring it in. Okay. I'll put to new layer with layer mask. Hit OK. So now we have our select subject, our automatic selection on its own layer. Uh, so we can worry about everything else separate. It has a mask. That's good. Let's go ahead and gonna say YouTube tutorial ch -ch 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 -ch, JB Photoshop V1. I'm just gonna save this so we don't lose our progress. Okay, back to select. No, we don't need select subject. I'm stupid. Back to a curves adjustment. I'm just gonna brighten this up way up. The reason I'm doing this is literally just so it's easier for me to see what I'm working on with the pen tool because my monitor is a little dark. So this will help us to see imperfections in our selection. Let's throw our curves layer on top. Yeah, cool, okay. Let's throw this in a group gonna call this watch okay let's go ahead get this selection working so I think I'm gonna need to select the straps with the pen tool totally and then the watch is basically good so let's just work on selecting the straps right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pen tool and I'm just going to slowly make my way up the strap. The further you zoom in, the easier this is to do. I'm using a drawing tablet, so it's usually a little easier in the mouse, but I feel like my hand-eye coordination is off today, so we'll see. Hope you guys are all having a good day. Thanks for tuning in to my tutorial. Uh, let's, let's go. Well, we'll just keep going. We'll fix that later. Okay. I need to zoom in just a little more. I want to get this perfect. The longer you take when you mask out your subject, the better it is going to look. It's just the way it is. I'm just modifying my curves layer to add a little bit more contrast. Oops. Excuse me. What is going on? There we go. <laughs> Got him. Guys, why am I so bad at masking right now? Okay, okay, okay. I really need to learn the intricacies of the shortcuts for the pen tool, but, you know, maybe once I get good, once I get better the pen tool, I'll make a little tutorial to help you guys out too. There are other ways to select something, but Pen tool is one of the most accurate. So if you're doing something for a client, doing something that's gonna be printed especially, you wanna get it right. Wanna get it right 
the first time if possible. The nice thing about masks is they are non-destructive. So we can go back in with the like brush tool or something and uh, and fix anything that we messed up on, which is really nice. It's a nice thing to be able to do. So if you hold down control, you'll be able to change the curve of your mask points. So hold down control and then click and drag. And it lets you get that curve. If you just click a point, it's not going to be curved here. But if you click and drag, not control or anything, just click and drag, when you're making points, it'll let you get that curve. And that's what you want for certain situations. If you hold down Alt and you click on your point, it will delete the last half of your curve and keep the first half before the point. Just try it out, it'll make more sense. But it's, uh, it just is useful in certain situations as well. You kind of have to experiment with it. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Now that I've traced around that part, I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to hit P for pen tool, go up to selection up here on the top left, click selection, hit feather radius, zero pixels, anti-aliased on, new selection, hit OK. Now it's going to give me that selection. Now I can go up to my layer that already has um, you know, it's partially selected because we did select subject. Uh, and I can go into select and mask, click it, zoom in here, feather out my selection, like, I don't know, a pixel or something, shrink it in a little bit, hit OK. Now I'm going to paint with white at 100% opacity over the area that should be selected. Or I can hit Control Delete when white is my background color, and it'll fill it in. Another thing, Control Shift I will inverse your selection. And now we're going to paint with black, and we're going to make sure that all this unnecessary stuff is not in there. It's not a part of our selection anymore. I'm gonna have to get a little bit more detailed as we get closer to the watch, so I will zoom in. Still painting. I'd rather be my I'd rather my selection be shrunk than too uh, too expansive, too large, because I don't want a weird edge on my watch on my selection here. Um, okay. Might fix it a little bit later up here. It's a little smooth, but we can go back and fix it. Now, let's get rid of this part. Mm, might do the pen tool again. Go up here. Get that looking all good. 
Kind of have to guesstimate on this part, and that is okay. We're going to fix this later. It's one of the things we're fixing. And yeah, it's not the best way to take this photo using a mic stand which covers this buckle, but it is a good way to take a photo if you want to make a Photoshop tutorial out of it and show people how to fix their problems, which is exactly what I am here to do. Okay. Hit selection, hit OK, hit W, hit select and mask. I'll put two selection, OK. Now we're going to get our brush. And on the mask, not on the layer, on the mask, we're painting with black, which will remove the area we have not selected before and after. Nice and simple. Cool. We are getting there. Now we need to select the lower part of the strap, the strap down here. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to brighten this up again, my temporary curves layer, just so I can see the lines of the strap, so that I can, uh, you know, mask it out better. It's as simple as that. There are other ways to do this as well, such as the a tool that might be good for this is the magic wand tool, which is up here. It's in that stack. But you already started using the pen tool, and that's what you're going to use for most situations. And if the background, um, oops, shouldn't have done that. If the background is not this clean, then the mask, the pen tool becomes even more useful. So that's why it's so important that you know how to use a pen tool. If you don't know how to use a pen tool, there's a lot of stuff you're not going to be able to do in Photoshop. So it's the most, most important tool for selecting stuff, period. You need to have a good understanding of masks as well especially for product photography, but really for anything. But yeah, product photography, it's the pen tool is like your best friend. So also I use it when I do automotive photography. I use it when I do uh, just about anything in Photoshop. Whoops. By the way, if you learn the pen tool in Photoshop, you also will be good at masking stuff out in After Effects or Nuke, just in case you want to get into visual effects in the film industry, which is where I started. 
Okay. Pen tool, selection, hit OK. Hit W, hit select and mask. Make sure we can see. Feather it, feather it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to shrink my edge in. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to paint with white or hit Control Delete. And boom, there we have it. So our watch is masked out. We might go in and fix some areas later, but now we can go ahead, create a new layer under our watch, call it BG for background, hit X and D a couple times to bring up our white and black swatches. Make sure black is the background color, hit Control Delete to fill it. And now, we have a perfectly black background. If I turn off my temporary curves layer, you can see it's looking pretty solid. Back to curves. I'm going to tone down my curves layer. It's still a little bit brighter than I'll have it at the end, but that's okay. Whoops. Okay, now we need to fix all of this stuff. Let's go ahead and duplicate. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to rename this watch last out. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my watch layer just so I don't do any irreversible change. And then I'm going to come in here with the pen tool. And... Uh, I'm gonna mask out our strap on top. Hit W or click the quick select tool. Hit select and mask. And we're going to straighten the strap now. So I want it to blend down here. So it's gonna be something like, uh, something like that maybe. I'm gonna go ahead and select and mask again. Feather. Okay, let's try that. Now I'm going to hit Control R, bring up my ruler, go to the left side, click on the ruler, and drag out. It'll drag out a straight line. This way, I can make sure that my strap is actually going to be straight. So I'm going to line it up based on these blue lines. And you can see that the bottom strap is already straight, so we know we're in a good place. And we can see that our watch is pretty straight too because these lugs line up with each other vertically. So if I go, where is where is that tool? Puppet Warp, I believe, is the tool I want. Edit Puppet Warp. Uh, here, wait. We need to click a couple times. I'm going to click down here. I'm going to click up here. I'm just going to drag that over. So my problem here is... I need to apply my layer mask for this part. Now we can puppet warp. Go back. One dot there, one dot there. Sorry, one dot here. Drag it over. It's kind of hard to see, but. make sure these are lined up. Let's see how that looks. So it's clear to me that we need a more detailed uh, puppet work. I'm 
gonna put some extra dots. Line this up. I'm lining all of this up with my blue rulers here. Sorry, it's so hard to see. This is a tricky situation. I don't know how I did this so well last time. <laughs> Okay, let's look at that for now. See how it's looking. So, before and after puppet warp. That's definitely better. Definitely having an issue here, which we might be able to fix pretty easy. A little bit of clone stamping. one of the issues now is that this area is too dark so I'm gonna go to my burn tool go to highlights or sorry go to midtones and we'll do exposure five percent just brighten this up a little bit Okay, let's take a look. So before and the after. Yeah, not bad, not terrible. Okay. So we have more issues. We need to fix this. We need to straighten this out and we need to fix this. I think first should go ahead and straighten this out. Okay, let's see how this selection is looking. Not too bad, not too bad. I'm going to copy and paste that, that selection. I'm gonna bring up my rulers. Whoop, what am I doing? Drag a ruler down from the top. Make sure this is straight. Okay. Now I can drag my rollers back up. Turn that layer off. 
Now I just have to clone stamp out. this bar. I'm clone stamping with current and below selected. That way it's not going to clone stamp my curves layer. That would be very bad. Okay. I forgot to say this earlier, but obviously this tutorial is, I don't know, it's sort of for beginners and it's sort of for advanced Photoshop artists. Everybody might learn something here, but you sort of need to have a basic knowledge of Photoshop to follow my tutorials, obviously, because I don't always remember to explain everything and I like to move pretty fast. So if you don't know anything about Photoshop, go watch a Getting Started series. Learn all the basic tools over here and then you'll be good to follow my tutorials. But I try to do what I can, you know what I'm saying? Okay, cool, so let's look at the before and after. So, we were here, and now we're here. We were here, and now we are here. So that's looking much better. We have a little issue here. The issue is the bottom of this bar, to me, it's not like totally straight in the middle. So what I'm going to do is mask, close my mask, hit feather, feather it barely, then I'm going to go in here and uh, just hit alt and the mask button to make a mask that excludes that portion in the middle that was sticking out. So now if we back up and look at it, it looks better. Something we need to do is we need to fix these scuff marks on the metal bars on the NATO strap. So what I would recommend for that, again, select your uh, bars, clone stamp tool, 100% opacity, get a really little brush, just go in there and fix it, or we could do like 80% opacity, doesn't matter, hit alt, click up here, go straight down, and click. And now, we're painting that out. For this, I'm going to hit, I'm going to click, I'm going to go to the right, and I'm going to click. And now I'm copying it from the left to the right. Taking your time is typically worth it in this situation. Oh, you know what? Let me show you an alternate way to do this. Another way we can do this is use the dodge tool, change it to like shadows, and then just go in here and paint on the shadows to brighten them up. So if you want to preserve this edge, and you don't want to clone stamp too much, that's an option. Keep in mind, I still have my curves layer on, which is a temporary adjustment. But it does help us to see this better. And that is why it is still on. It's a work adjustment. Okay. So if we look before and after, we were here, now we are here. That is much cleaner, much cleaner. So now I'm going to do the same thing to that bar and to that bar. So this bar we don't have a selection for, so I'm just going to be a little bit more careful. Or we can go in with the pen tool. Make a quick selection just to help us out. In fact, I'll do that. Feather it a little. Shift the edge in. Right about there. I'm concerned with this area only because that's where I'm painting, right? So 
could even bring a ruler down for this. So I'm going to click right here and then click right there. And now I'm copying from where I want to copy and I'm just painting. Painting like Bob freaking Ross. I'm gonna do my dodge tool a little bit on the shadows. It's gonna even out the tones because I'm lifting the shadows up into the mid-tones selectively with my brush tool. Again, much easier to do when you have a curves layer to brighten everything up so you can see it better. So that's looking pretty clean. Here's our before and our after. Now we have one last one to do. For this, there's not too much wrong with it, so I'm just going to use the burn tool, or sorry, the dodge tool, which is the same palette as the burn tool. I'm just going to go in there, going to lift it up. It's looking pretty cool. I decided to not brighten that part up because it helps us see the curvature. This one I'm going to do uh, without the curves layer on because I feel like it's more delicate. I'm going to hit clone stamp 30% copy start painting to flatten it out a bit I'm gonna paint here too okay that's much better okay cool so put my work curves layer adjustment back on we have a couple things left we are getting pretty close. We haven't color graded it yet, but that's sort of, you know, not the focus of this tutorial. We want to brighten up this part of the watch. For that, I'm just going to use the dodge tool again on shadows, and I'm going to go in here and uh, just paint a little. I'll set my exposure to like 15 maybe, 15% 15 because I don't want to go overboard. For now, I'm also going to make a temporary hue saturation adjustment. Just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going back to like 5% on the dodge tool because this is pretty delicate. Pretty delicate balance we've got. I'm going to dodge this line to make the shape of the watch a little bit more apparent. Something you got to think about. The dodge tool affects shadows. Shadows affect how you perceive the lines and the shape of the product. Okay. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ref remove the hue, um, the yellow from the watch. So if we go here, we make a new folder, we call this, I don't know, color correction. And this is going to be our actual um, color correction. Like we're actually going to um, keep this in our final photo. I can go to vibrance, and bring it down, or I can go to saturation, bring that down. 
way down and uh, I'm just gonna go in here and paint let's see I think I'll make everything black and white and then I'll paint back in the areas that I want to keep the color in so I'm gonna paint it back in my watch See, I don't like that. I'm not a fan of the yellow. Not a fan of yellow, dude. looking pretty solid so now if we look at uh, before and after we have our color correction um, our saturation there just getting rid of the yellow on the lugs of the watch I think it's pretty ugly in my opinion so now we need to touch up the face of the watch for that I think I'm gonna do pretty harsh curves adjustment So I can go in here. I'm gonna, just gonna make a, we'll do a new layer. We'll call this um, CS for clone stamp. I'm gonna get the clone stamp tool, current and below. And then just go in here and paint. Notice that I'm doing this below my color correction layer. If I were to do this clone stamping above my color correction layer, it would really mess it up later on. I would save that color data along with it. And I just want this to be, you know, working with the data of the watch itself, not any color adjustments I've made. I want those to be totally separate so my effect is more procedural or controllable. Because that is what gives us flexibility later on. So I'm just fixing anything that isn't perfect now. This is the workflow I would have for a highly polished social media image or for any product photo that I deliver to a client who asks me to edit the photo, which most of them will. Okay, so if we turn our clone stamp on and off, we can see the issues that we fixed. See a couple more places, problem areas. This is why the drawing tablet is so useful, because I'm able to really be more precise. And there are drawing tablets that are like couple thousand dollars. The one I use is I think under a hundred fifty dollars. It's a medium size um, Wacom tablet. It doesn't have a screen. You just kind of get used to it. It's hand-eye coordination. So once you get used to it, it's pretty quick. And if you Photoshop all day, it's really useful. It's almost a necessity. Okay. Turn off and on our clone stamp layer, looking pretty good. Gonna do a little bit of organization over here. Gonna make our watch layers, our watch layers folder blue so it's, we can just keep track of everything. Color correction is just gonna be orange. Just so we know. You know, it just makes it quicker to select layers over here. If you stay organized, it will save you time. Okay, 
let's turn off our temporary curves and let's see where we're at. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna make a temporary levels adjustment or maybe a permanent one. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna paint on the mask. I'm just going to darken down this highlighted area with my levels adjustment. Whoops, what did I do wrong? Oh, I was painting with black, wasn't I? Here we go. Um, just to fix the highlight there. Now, another thing I can do, something I didn't try last time, but I'm going to try this time, is make another levels layer. And use it to bring up the other side of the watch. Hit mask, hit invert, double click my mask, hit invert, paint with the white brush, and just uh, just brighten up this metal area, particularly up here. So I hit X on my keyboard to alternate between painting with black and painting with white. I'm just gonna brighten up this metal a little bit. that down like 50% maybe or what I can do is do that okay I'm also going to go in and create a copy of my watch uh, let's see I'm gonna go in with the dodge tool on my shadows again just like I did earlier on these bars and brighten up the area of my watch. That's too dark. Okay. We are getting there. Are getting there. Okay. Before and after. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else do we have left to do? Let's make our curves layer something that we actually like. Like something like that. I'm gonna go in the curves layer and I'm going to paint out the areas that are too bright just a little bit. Just so I can match the watch from right to left. Come. Okay. 
we're getting there. And of course, you could spend longer with this. You can really take your time. But since I already did all of this once, I'm going to move a little fast. I'm going to fix the seconds hand here. Whoa, what did I just do? Okay, I'm going to clone stamp. I'm just giving a little separation. Okay, so you can see what I did there. What I'm going to do actually is feather that a little bit more. little too much. So if we look at the before and after there, again, you could spend longer on this if you want to. I think we're getting pretty close, guys. So I think you get the idea. The way that we would fix the buckle up here, I'll just tell you the theory. Because this tutorial would be 12 days long, and it probably already is. I would go around and mask out the buckle like this. Okay. I'd make that selection, I'd hit W, I'd go into select and mask, feather it, I'd get it right, you know, I'd take like a couple minutes to make this selection. Copy and paste, you know, delete it from the layer below, and then go in here and um, get your clone stamp tool, and just go to town, start painting away, right? and just fix that line, you know, something like that. Just go in and paint it and fix it. Uh, basically, more clone stamp up here, right? Use some dodge and burn, use some clone stamp. Just make sure that you get it all looking really good. That's one method. Um, and that's probably, honestly, that's probably the most universal method for fixing something like this in Photoshop. Uh, da, 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 da. You know, Go in here and start painting. Um, I would, you know, rotate it a little bit, make sure that everything is centered. Go in with the dodge tool on my shadows 
and fix these little areas that are too dark. So that's a little bit overdone, but you get what I'm saying. You know, make it all look a little bit more clean. This part as well. Go in here and sort of create a straight line. Right, feather it out, make sure it's all looking good, and then paint with the clone stamp tool. So you get the idea. You get the idea. And then for, you know, after all that, you can do your color. Let's say in your doc. Flatten image. Okay. I think for this, I would do a version of one of my own presets and then go into the curves and fix the black point and then go into color balance and fix that. So it's so unbalanced. Okay. Selective color, uh, you know. So yeah, something like that probably is what I would do for the color. It's totally up to you though. But I usually just use a curves, uh, a mix of curves and color balance, vibrance and levels to achieve my color. So, but anyways, I hope that this extremely long tutorial taught you guys something useful. Uh, let's go over our before and after. There's our before, there's our after. So we didn't fully edit the buckle on top, but basically we walked through balancing out the watch, making sure that you know they're equally lit over here and over here, fixing highlights on this side, fixing shadows on this side. Um, we bent you know the strap back so it's actually straight. We fixed this, we fixed the bars so those look straight. Uh, we got rid of the microphone. We made the background black. We color graded. Um, did a lot of stuff. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Let me know if you have any requests for future tutorials. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.